Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Today, guys, I want to share with you another Invicta acquisition. This is the Akula. Now, this is a watch that's been around for a really long time. Uh, you know, I've ordered this watch way back, I'd say maybe two years ago. Uh, Invicta stores had a sale on it. They kind of pop up, they come and go. I've seen this watch many times. It's been out for a long time. Uh, and like I said, sometimes you'll have a really great deal, and then next thing you know, they're gone. Uh, so, the one I did order was the Rose Tone with the brown face. The Akulas, I believe all of them uh, in this particular style. Uh, let me try to dim down this light a little bit because I feel like it's really difficult to actually see the face of this watch here. Try that. Let me know if that's any better. All right, so it has kind of like this pinstripe face. Whether you get the black version, um, whatever color you get, they all have that, which I absolutely love. I love the how clean this watch is. It's very simple. It's very basic in design, and it might look really familiar to you. And I didn't realize this uh, when I first started looking at the Akula. This is a homage to a Patek Nautilus, uh, which is a lot smaller, of course. But Invicta said, hey, we're going to make our own Nautilus. And they I wish they would have called it the Nautilus, but they called it the Akula, uh, which is, that's fine. But um, it, it is the same shape, which has kind of this, like, I don't know what you'd call this, kind of like a fluted size of the watch. Uh, if you ever look at the 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 uh, Patek, the Patek Philippe, I can't talk tonight, uh, Nautilus, very similar in design. Uh, I love the fact that Victor decided to do that and just beef it up, right? So it, it's a killer watch. When I ordered the Rose Tone one, it was on special for about $115, something like that. I ordered it. I waited two weeks. Um, you know, they didn't ship it. I said, what's going on? They said, oh, we're so sorry. We had a delay. We'll ship it tomorrow. And then Invicta stores refunded me and said it was gone and out of stock. And since then, I haven't been able to get my hands on one for that price. So, which brings me to this watch. So this is a quartz. Unfortunately, I do prefer to go with the automatics. Uh, the one I was going to get had the Seiko Inch 35. A lot more appealing. And so this is the watch that I, I they've been having right now advertised on... Um, Invicta stores, I'll put the links in the description, for about 100 bucks uh, right now on their sale. I almost bought it. I saw it on Evine as well for about 150 Still incredible value. Uh, but, you know, without the automatic movement, I just didn't want to pull the trigger on it just on a quartz watch. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's still a fantastic piece. Just I was more drawn to the automatic. Now, I found this watch on eBay, and the price I got for it was unbelievable. I'm still surprised the seller actually sent it to me. I got it for $63. Uh, plus seven dollars shipping, so seventy bucks out the door, ship tax and everything, uh, which is amazing. Uh, I was just lucky that I won the bid. You know, it was just something nobody was really bidding on. Maybe only a few people, and I waited to the last minute. And I was able to to uh, to get right under there under the radar and pick this up for this price. I wasn't gonna buy another Invicta. I wasn't gonna buy this watch, even though I did put it in my shopping cart and I was gonna get it. And I was like, nah, I don't want to spend a hundred on a corpse. Uh, but for the price, you really can't go wrong. And to be honest with you, after having it, I'm really I probably should have just bought it a hundred as well uh, because it is a killer piece. Now, those of you who whine and complain about the Invicta branding won't like the fact that it says Invicta right on the side of the case there, so you just probably shouldn't get it. But it does say Invicta on the back, on the face, on the sides, on the clasp. So you know it's an Invicta. Um, I love the band on this. Um, as, far as, what I, for, as far as I can tell, they look like they're solid links. The band does feel um, a little bit lighter. I'm kind of going to guess and maybe say that the center links might be hollow. But if they are hollow, you really can't tell. Um, really hard for me to determine. And it might just be me. I might just be, you know, um, wrong on that. But it is an incredible band. Very similar to the band you're going to find on the Excursions. Um, this band is, I think, really makes the watch. I love how it has these center links that are actually a little bit higher than the rest of the band. And those three different angles. It really catches the light. It's a really unique look. Uh, again, you have that beautiful homage to the uh, homage style to the Patek Nautilus. Uh, screw down crown, of course, very basic. Uh, you know, quartz movement, Invicta logo, nothing really, you know, too over the top on that. Standard Invicta clasp, you know, fold over, uh, kind of friction clasp with the lock uh, that Invicta is known for, and the Akula logo on the back. It's a killer piece, and if you do want to get it, again, the link is in the description when you pick this up, about 100 bucks right now, and it's worth every penny. I mean, it would be even a better value having that Seiko Inch 35 movement, but even without, I mean, a quartz watch is still, we all know, super reliable, super accurate. Um, you know, you just don't have, I guess, the the mechanics behind it. You know, it's still an awesome watch. Um, as far as the specifics on this watch, let me just pull this up real quick. Um, 
and I hope that they're still in stock. Let me just go to Invicta stores real quick. We'll make sure that this is actually still in stock um, because, yeah, they do have it. 99 bucks, rock bottom price. I believe that is shipped. So it is a 58 millimeter watch. Uh, they do have it in black and the white face. I was kind of hemming and hawing between which one. Uh, what really made me go with the, um, the, uh, the, this is really confusing, sorry. <laughs> Now I'm really more confused. This actually says here that this is a Swiss masterpiece with a 28,000 vibrations per hour. It doesn't make any sense. This is a quartz. I'm not sure why they have that on here. That is wrong. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think that's correct. I think that's um, kind of kind of caught me at a standstill here. I I don't know why they have that on there. Uh, it says here, shock resistance of 28,800 vibrations per hour. Maybe I'm a little confused, but I always thought, I didn't think that had anything to do with shock resistance. But let me know, guys. Educate me on this. Uh, again, you know, I, I don't know. It says it has a three-year warranty. I'm not even sure that's correct. But let's tell you the real specifics. It's a, uh, it says here, S2 is the movement vendor, uh, which I believe is Seiko. Uh, and it says, but I could be wrong in that as well. Movement caliber PC32 is a quartz. Japanese movement it is 316L stainless steel band length 210 millimeters. Uh, you know I'm not going to read everything on here because you know you guys can just. I'd encourage you just to click the link and check it out. Uh, but it's available for $99. Now I'm I'm just destroying these videos today, but who gives a shit? You know, um, you really can't go wrong with the price. So as far as the width, I know a lot of times people will, you know, when you think 58 millimeters, we think you know Sea Hunter. Um, I'll tell you that if you're used to a, si a watch like the Sea Hunter, you're like, oh, 58 millimeters, this must be huge. This is not as big as a Sea Hunter. And how they measure this here, they're measuring this right to the edge of the crown, um, which once a crown is screwed down, it does sit flush against the side of the case and it recesses. So you are looking at 58 millimeters from left to right. Again, you know, it. To me, it doesn't really, I know they use the term a lot, it wears like, it wears like. I always believe a watch wears as it measures. And really, this watch doesn't wear anywhere near as large as a Sea Hunter. Although it may measure 58 millimeters, it doesn't look 58 millimeters when you have these large cutouts. If the watch was a big square or big round 58 millimeter watch, it would appear a lot larger. To me, uh, and then when you also measure a Sea Hunter, you really are getting a lot of, uh, you know, you're getting a lot of face because when you measure a C-Enter, you're going at the edge of the bezel and the bezel isn't really huge on that. So you do have a lot of face. When you, if you actually measure the bezel on this, you are looking at a bezel measurement of about just under 50 millimeters. So in my opinion, the way the watch is designed, the way that the, the face is designed, it really wears more like a 50 millimeter watch. So I, I want to mention that because sometimes with the Invicta, the way they measure things, and when we see them on TV, we see them on other people's wrists, it's really hard to tell how big a watch is. And if you are a guy who really likes the big, beefy watches and really gravitate towards the biggest watch that you can get, you might be used to things like the Sea Hunter, like the Grand Octane. And when you see a watch that measures 58, I've seen other watches that Invicta measures, and they'll put on their website, and there's, oh, 60 millimeter watches, but they're really not. They're starting to include the very furthest function pusher, the very furthest crown. They might even measure it incorrectly. So I found, you know, Grand Octane's sold as 63s and 58s. I always go with be bezel measurement. It doesn't really matter you know, what else is overhanging. Um, and really when you look at a watch like this, if we just removed these two kind of fluted out sections of the case and we just went like this, this is really how the watch wears. And that's more like a 50 millimeter watch. Um, so I don't want anybody to kind of be disappointed if you say, oh man, 58 millimeter cool, I can't wait, it's gonna be huge. It's really not. It's still a big watch, don't get me wrong. Uh, and you know, I know we get desensitized, you think 50 millimeters isn't big. It's still a massive watch, but it's not gonna be as big as your Sea Hunters or Grand Octanes, even though despite they have that measure of 58 millimeters. Um, if we're gonna consider this 58 millimeter watch, we really need to consider a Sea Hunter a 73, which I don't consider a Sea Hunter a 73. If we're gonna measure all the way to the edge of the crown protector, yeah, it technically adds the measurement of the watch, but it just, isn't to me it's not a 73 millimeter watch i like the bezel that's what you mainly see on a watch is that bezel and face and i think you can get the illusion sometimes that a watch is larger 
if you have a thin, that's why the diesel watches look so huge because they have a super thin bezel, it's all face. So you have this big giant face on your wrist, right? With a Sea Hunter, in some regards, I think sometimes the diesel watches look bigger than a Sea Hunter. And they're really not, they're pretty close, but um, you know, it's, it's all about how they design a watch. And again, looking at this really, um, I hate using the term, it wears like, you know, like they use, oh, well, this is a, you know, 58 wears like a 63 or, you know, the, however they want to sell it online. Um, really, in this case, this is a 58 millimeter watch, but it wears like a 50. Um, you just don't have enough metal to really call this a 58 millimeter watch. But overall, beautiful, stunning, great value, and I'm really glad I got it, especially for that price. I will put a link for eBay as well. I normally don't link... Um, to eBay on Invicta sales because I do want people to go with Invicta stores. Um, I feel like you're, you know, it, it's where I buy my watches and I can only recommend where I mainly buy. I have bought other times on eBay, you know, uh, what they call the display models, and I've had bad luck with those those things. Um, and I wasn't really sure when I got this what kind of condition I was going to get. Fortunately, this is brand new in the box, no issues. Um, and I will put a link to this. Um, for eBay listings where maybe you lucky, you can get lucky and pick one up for the price I did. You never know. Uh, so I have a 7-inch wrist. I'm about 5 foot 7 and a half. I weigh about 180 pounds. And this is what it looks like. I got my size, my height, my weight. I just happened to have my other watch I reviewed the other day. Brand new Legi watch. You can compare it to a 40. Uh, <laughs> I mean, naturally, huge difference in size. Uh, no comparison. It is just a tank of a watch. Um, it, I mean, it dwarfs anything. Um, you know what I'd really love to see? Is off the subject. Is Invicta do like a homage to a Submariner, but just make it? I know they make the Pro Diver and they make some larger Pro Divers, but when I look at those, I I, I still see a Pro Diver. You know, something like this, I see Submariner. Uh, so it'd be really cool to actually do an Invicta Sub. Uh, just make it like 58. Just huge, massive, same bezel, same everything. Just basically beef it up. Uh, it would look pretty cool. Uh, but still, nonetheless, um, it's a great looking watch. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions whatsoever. Uh, if you do, drop me a comment or drop me an email. I'm always here to help you guys out. Uh, as always, um, you know, you guys be kind to one another, be safe out there. Uh, you know, and remember, collecting watches should be fun. Um, there's a lot of negative people, a lot of, a lot of arrogant snobs out there. Don't listen to what they say. Give these brands a chance. Uh, you'll be really happy with the Invicta quality. I've been happy with them. I've never had any kind of issues with any, any Invictus. I mean, they really are kind of my go-to watch for, for quality, for money. Yeah, there's lots of brands out there. I've reviewed Legi, I've reviewed, you know, Pagani Design. There's all kinds of price points, and there's lots of great watches, you know, across the board. But, uh, you know, you can always rest assured uh, that if you get something Invicta, you're, you're going to get that level of quality. It's really, you know, really alleviates any concern. The only time you really have to worry is if you get something, again, from a seller on eBay that, that states, oh, these are floor models. What those are are damaged watches. And a lot of times I've found some of these sellers who sell this on eBay, uh, they'll ship it out. They won't. They have, it a model, they have a model number, and they just ship it. They don't even inspect the watch. So be really careful where, where you buy. Again, you buy through Invicta stores, you're going to be good to go. This seller is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, they shipped the watch three days I had it, which is pretty incredible. So uh, very happy, and uh, it's a great-looking piece. So uh, let me know what you guys think. As always, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Be kind to one another. Take care, and uh, subscribe to the channel. See you guys.